What's going on guys, Kamenkins here. In this video, I'll show you how to install Catago on Linux. And we're going to be installing the pure CPU version because that's the simplest way possible to get introduced to the engine. And before we start, just a few words on the engine itself. So Catago is a sort of a stockfish in the Go world. It's free, open source, and all the professional players uh, making tutorials on YouTube actually do reference this engine using this for game analysis. So it's really uh, well known, sort of a thing, uh, very popular. And I believe that, bear in mind the fact that probably those professional Go players uh, mostly are not programmers, and I believe they, they are using uh, Windows at most. Uh, and probably that's quite pretty trivial to install it there. However, uh, when I tried to install uh, to install Kenega on Linux for the first time, I I fall into numerous issues. So I decided to make this video in order to uh, figure out, like in order to uh, to help you guys to avoid those pitfalls I've been through. So. Uh, just a few words uh, why exactly we're going to be uh, installing the CPU version. Well, uh, it might happen that you don't have uh, the hardware like uh, those fancy GPUs that uh, the standard builds are kind of using. And if you just want to, again, I just want to get introduced to the engine, uh, just the feel its relative strength analysis power. Maybe you want to try to run this versus other other engines. And for instance, uh, if you want to play uh, GP, if you want to be playing a GPU versus CPU engine, then it's not really fair because uh, GPU might be my, my way more powerful than CPU uh, in terms of calculation for all these neural networks related stuff. So uh, it really make may it really may make sense to actually have if you have. One CPU engine already, like I like I like Apache for instance. Apache is another open source engine for Go. So if I want to play like Catago versus Apache uh, and want to make sure that that's the fair fight, in, th in that case I need to make sure that the hardware is, that has been involved with uh, in order to run both of the engines is actually the same. So that's another reason. And again, like no matter what uh, sort of architecture you have, most likely. Uh, so this version that we're going to be installing in this video should be working literally on whatever modern hard hardware, even without any uh, NC, uh, even without any fancy enhancements. So um, the very first thing to consider, uh, we need to go to this. Uh, so here uh, I'm at categotraining.org uh, website. So we need to first we need to uh, download the latest release. And here we have a whole lot of binary, uh, like, uh, yeah, sort of a binary packages. It's not only, but yes, it, it does contain the binary executable, some files as well. And this is getting really, you, you might get really frustrated, like, uh, which one to use. So uh, we're going to be using the one for Linux, obviously. So those that states Windows here are out, are out of our interest. And we're going to be using this iGen. And this is the version that actually uh, that is a CPU build. So uh, this CUDA, OpenCL, and the rest of stuff are involving the uh, GPU uh, frameworks, sort of. While this iGen for Linux uh, 64 architecture, it actually, um, it's a pure CPU build. I'm not sure what the BS29 stands for, so I'm gonna be using this one. I've already tested that, it works like a charm. So just click and it starts downloading. It's not downloading the neural net, uh, so that should be downloaded separately. So for now, we just want to make sure that it actually gets downloaded. So I'm going to the folder, right? Okay, and here we go. So now I want to extract this. Okay, so far so good. And now another, like the very first pitfall, so I just opened the terminal here. So I'm, well, here is the binary executable, this Catago. So uh, now it will work because I've already installed what is known as libzip5, which is uh, a, pa a, pa a package to work with uh, zip, zip files. And the reason for that, well, I don't, just wanted to find where is the... 
Uh, libzip is a C library for reading, creating, and modifying zip archives. Files can be added from data buffers, files, and so on, blah, blah, blah. So uh, the idea that the neural network itself is distributed as a sort of archive here. And in order to actually unpack that and connect and make it work, uh, we need this libzip5. I didn't initially have this on my Linux Mint, so, and... Uh, what they su suggest the year, so sort of get installed libzip5. Uh, it wasn't uh, available uh, initially, and, and I was just too lazy to wait until the entire get update gets work. So uh, the alternative solution, quite pretty sim simple one, is just to use this direct link and download the binary package. So we just copy the link. So uh, I'm using this AMD64. They also have the a ARM version, but since uh, I have this... Uh, the Intel like processor, so uh, the, uh, I'm going to be using this AMD64. So if we now go to the separate tab, here we have this sort of a download. Okay, now uh, in order to install it uh, from from this Debian package, using uh, we can use the apt directly. So yes, yeah, so open another terminal here. I already have this installed, but just to give you an idea, so. We just grab the entire file name, and here we say sudo apt get install, or just apt install might be enough, install, and the package name, but just to make sure that it's not downloaded from internet, we need to make this syntax. And could now try to install, but uh, it should say that, yeah, libzip5 is already the newest version because I have installed this before actually recording this video. So if you don't, uh, if you don't install this and if you don't, if you don't have this installed, it just, uh, the, the Katago binary executable would just simply refuse from working. But now it actually should work. So uh, let's have a look. Here we have... Um, here we have the binary executable, and let's run around this. So, Katago, and we are running into the idea that it needs the sub command to run. So, the sub command we're going to be using is GDP, which stands for Go Text Protocol. So, we should instead say Katago uh, space and GDP. Now, uh, it kind of tries to run, but it gets the core done because uh, it didn't find the neural network file. So in order to, uh, so we, we, we actually need to download one and uh, in order to get an idea where exactly you can download this from, you can go to readme and it, and it does reference uh, to this kategotraining.org website. So here on the kategotraining.org, um, somewhere down below, yeah, networks and here is the latest network. So we can just download this one. Quite quite a bit of time. It's 166 megabytes here. So yeah, takes quite a bit of time. But once we get this uh, neural net downloaded, we can then actually rename this to default and connect to, to the program. Okay, and we are almost done. And here we go. So now I go back to my downloads folder and now I just need to grab this entire one and paste here. And uh, I want to rename this to default, how did they call it? Default, uh, uh, def default modal. Okay, so default modal, rename default modal. And yeah. This is it. So from now on, it actually already should be capable to run. So Kataco GDP. Uh, okay, what did I do wrong? Downloads. Default model. Did I? Oh, just a typo. Not nodal, but modal. Okay, sorry for that. So, yeah, and now it runs, uh, which is fantastic. So, uh, let's try a few GDP commands. So, it's those commands that GUI is going to be sending, so name. And when you send a name, it uh, not only returns the name, but it actually, uh, it actually loads the network. So, from now on, we can actually start working with this. So, we can have a look at the version. That's the second command GDP uh, GUI is going to be sending. Um, 
then for instance protocol version should be two all right and list commands as uh, that's another uh, GUI command that would be sent and here um, uh, quite interesting one is time settings that's the one that we're supposed to be using within the GUI because otherwise uh, it's by default it's gonna be uh, thinking for too long and just to give you an idea how it works it's literally enough to say time settings time settings and then the main time uh, uh, is should be the format of uh, floating point number so just let's consider the zero time then the Buyomi time which is sort of a sort of an increment uh, but not like the, like in Fisher time but it's just like like uh, let's say the amount of uh, seconds per move so let's give it like five seconds per move and then it needs um so here uh, over time stones i'm not sure what uh over time over time stone stands for but i've been trying uh to set it to one and it was working uh, quite reasonable after so uh this equal sign means that it just didn't understand it if we now say like generate move for black for instance even though this this is the command version from uh, uh th this is the command from the gdp protocol version one still it kind of it's enough well it takes a little bit longer than uh than five seconds but uh eventually does give the move which is fantastic well, i'm not sure if the show board command is available yeah it is available indeed and yeah here we have the move that Catago has just made on its internal board so from now on we are actually ready to connect this to the GUI right so let's try that as well um, I am using a so-called Sebaki GUI so let me just quickly show you this so here is the Sebaki GUI uh, it's a one file uh, distribution so it's just a single file to load the entire GUI uh it's built on electron js so it's really truly cross-platform uh really extremely easy to use and here uh we go to manage engines and we need to add the new engine here so let's give it a name catago right and now um uh, we need this this path in particular so copy the path and path should be here now the arguments we should give a gdp because it's going to be running the gdp modes and initial commands are not needed so this should be fairly enough okay and now we can enable catago and just uh well hopefully it knows probably probably something is has gone horribly wrong with the pass so okay yeah, that's because of course I forgot to set the path properly so not just uh, actually I <laughs> need to specify the binary executable yeah <laughs> okay I need to specify the binary executable not only the path so now hopefully okay now it gets now it loads right so uh, it's loading the network uh, in kind of background so we need to wait until it just initializes before we start working with it before uh sending any commands so it, it takes time well yeah under the gui it might be a little bit longer i'm not sure why exactly but anyway so uh after it has been loaded it prints the list of commands we can now go for time settings just like we did and zero zero five and one and now if we ask it well uh before asking it plane uh for a given site to move i can actually show the analysis mode so it would now provide a sort of a hit map of where it considers the best move to be played and yeah it takes quite a bit of time because yeah this cpu version is definitely much slower compared to gpu but uh it kind of works so you see like this green areas like we're most likely to put the stones this red areas like or less likely to put the stones you can just play it that yeah assuming the video recordings of where I have here so like uh, the deeper it searches it just uh, uh, makes more uh, like better decisions where exactly to put the stone so yeah uh, yeah it's so, like it really gets like so yeah it's, it's really interesting thing to play with but uh, let's let's talk let's turn this off and let's actually go to 
uh, let's actually go to actual play. So if I want to set this as white player, and here we go. So I'm making a move and it now tries to generate the move back in response. And it should be roughly uh, around five, sec five seconds, but it may take a little bit longer. So you can just feel free to check to change that value, the time centers. But yeah, generally it works, which is, which is fantastically good. So uh, it's totally pointless for me to play versus Alpha Go uh, versus Kata Go because <laughs> because it's just too strong. Uh, yes, yeah, so I can't even bid the 5Q GNU Go. Yeah, and even if, if I make this famous Shusaku move, it doesn't help me either. So, but anyway, uh, actually, uh, quite a fun thing here that the move that Katago made uh, in this position uh, is indeed the Shusaku Fusaki, the Shusaku opening. And yeah, it's it's really it's really going theoretical. Uh, this is quite fun because it's really going theoretical without actually knowing, uh, without having the opening book. It just comes with these moves on its own. Well, maybe probably because uh, it just thinks for not that long. Uh, but anyway, it's really fun to see like how, how the modern engine actually plays in, uh, in the old fashioned style, like before even introducing the Kami. So yeah, um, I, I should probably resign after this move because I don't know what to do next, <laughs> to be honest. But anyway, um, this is just a proof of concept that the Katago CPU version actually runs on Linux, which is absolutely fantastic. And probably in the next video, I'll try to run a match uh, between uh, Katago and Patchy. So both CPU versions, uh, I can now set the time control to, to, to have to, for them to have the same time control and to see how crushing this engine actually is and if it's really so good as people are talking about this. So this is it from my side. Thanks for watching. Until the next time and take care.